Well, welcome everybody onto the bus uh, again, and uh, thank you for coming along today. Warwick's just going to uh, clear us through the cordon, um, and as we enter the cordon, it's today around about 38 hectares, so substantially reduced on the uh, hundreds of hectares that were locked down a couple of years ago. Um, and our plan is, or the plan of the CCDU, is to uh, progressively open up more of the cordon over the next uh, two months uh, with hopefully uh, reconstruction zones designated by June uh, and then the military exiting uh, the need for the tight cordon control around about July. So those dates are indicative only. We certainly haven't announced them yet but uh, uh, that's the program that's being worked toward. I'm just going around to uh, have a talk to uh, some people around some of the hotel proposals that are existing here. Uh, the rest of the commentary I'm going to leave largely to Warwick and uh, Roger um, so they can give you good factual information. If they give you factual information that uh, uh, doesn't line up with political uh, decisions then I'll be able to uh, step in at that point. But by and large this is uh, an exercise today and uh, just indicating the sort of progress that's going on and trying to give a sense too of um, uh, the speed that we're working at and the requirement to work at about that pace. So I'd just like to introduce Gary Jarvis, he's um, General Manager of the Heritage Hotel here and he's, he's just going to talk about um, how progress has gone over the last couple of years and what his plans are for reopening and, and the work you've been up to, Gary. Thank you, Warwick. Uh, yes, thank you, welcome. Um, and first of all, just thank you to, uh, to the Minister and Sarah for organising this and giving the Heritage Christchurch the opportunity to, to let you know where we've been going. All the way through, we work very closely with CIRA and Council in terms of the, um, th the requirements. Um, so we're meeting all those as we go, and we're still sort of carry on doing that in terms of um, getting the building ready, getting the building compliance, the water and the fitness is ready, so we, we can expedite that towards the end. And also um, the roading, the streetscape, make sure that's all sort of ready for the public access when that is due. So moving forward, we're looking forward to a, a, an official opening in May 13, 13th of May. Um, although between um, probably three to four weeks before that we'll start taking bookings so we'll have an opening in advance of that. Uh, we're very very excited as you can probably imagine after two years to reopen um, with the uh, apartment style rooms in there, one, two, three bedroom fully equipped rooms, um, laundries, facilities, kitchen facilities etc. Um, we'll also have our restaurant and bar that will reopen, small conference space downstairs, a fully equipped a warm winning gymnasium in the basement and uh, spa, sauna, pool, etc. So a really good product to bring into the market. We're very aware that Christchurch as a whole needs uh, an addition to the infrastructure in terms of accommodation for tourism um, and we believe the, the old government building certainly is going to provide a huge lift in that area and as I say we're very excited. We've actually reopened on its 100th year of when it first opened um, which again for us is a, is a great landmark to, to be able to reopen it then. You report on our left hand side now, this is part of the eastern frame. We're at where the plan there is to have residential um, apartments, five to six hundred residential apartments, cycleways. As far as purchase of land, we're going very, very well on the eastern frame. In this particular block on our left, we're probably about 85% where we have agreement with owners currently. The, um, the building on our right here, the, the, which was the Octagon restaurant. That, um, that has changed hands since the earthquake and the, um, the new owner has plans to do as much restoration work on that building as possible. There's a fantastic mount from ceiling inside it which is, um, which is actually better than perhaps the exterior. It's quite, a, quite something to behold. So for those who haven't been in for a while, on our right hand side, um, that's where this current building is coming down at the moment, that was um, the link centre and that's the last building in this block to have to be demolished. Uh, the, the balance are coming back to life reasonably soon and, and certainly in that area up there is one of the areas the Minister was talking about before around when the cordon might well come back reasonably soon. So we're going to stop once we get through there and, and have a chat to the, the people from Havenmore College about their plans um, which are very exciting for the redevelopment in the, in the city. So coming into view now on the right hand side, you'll recall that's where the Grumpy Mole Bar was and also Holiday Inn, so 
So that's a view that has been seen for a long, long time there. Um, and as you see, the buildings are right down there to um, essentially the foundations. On our right hand side again, where we've got the Lee's construction um, hoarding here and containers. The building next to that is owned by local investors. That, that had a, a $1.8 million strength in prior to the earthquake, and which is why it's done so very well. The same owners own, own this site that's under construction now, and they're building two buildings here. For the locals, it was a Java coffee building, so these are going to be two four story buildings. Offices um, for the upper stories, those offices are fully tenanted already. And the downstairs, there's some food and beverage and, and some retail. Quite clear, a lot of steel going into the foundations, and you'll see that uh, in all the, the foundations that we've been past today of the, of the rebuild buildings. Um, so, th this is a reflection of um, the earthquake standard. I talked to the owner a couple of days ago and this particular building here is going to be 188% of the new building code. So, so they're building with the future in mind and that, that building is going to be here for an awful long time. The additional cost to get up to 188 he, he said to me, was not extraordinarily expensive for them, so, which is why they've gone so high. So on our left here now, essentially where this building ends is where the new um, bus interchange will be. So for those familiar with the plan or those that aren't, that, that'll be the Central City bus interchange, not only for um, local commuter buses but also for tourist buses and taxis. It'll have retail around the outside of it, uh, was our plan and we've got very strong interest in, in uh, the private sector helping out with the build of that. So looking through to the right there, you can see just the back of that um, demolition that's going on at the moment. So essentially looking through there, what was the Westpac building, adjacent to that of course was um, Crown Chancellor over the road from it. So that, that's the last significant demolition in that part of, of the two or three blocks around here. Of course this, this um, building our right was the, the um, crossing the old bus exchange. So th this is the uh, south side of the retail precinct uh, for this block and we've got um, an outline development plan which has been lodged with the council for this block and um, we've got very very strong interest in seeing this come to fruition very very quickly. So on our left hand side we've, we've got a, a building here with the cafe building, it's adjacent to Valentine's. There's a, an additional story gone on to that, well in fact they're still completing it, gone on to that building um, as office space which is fully tenanted as well. And of course Valentine's on our left which has been open since show week 2011. So, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to go into the Triangle Centre, what was the Triangle Centre, we, we might chat for standing in here now. We're going to um, hear from the Avon Moore Tertiary Institute, from Carl Yates, about what their plans are uh, as far as the Institute is concerned and when, when they want to reopen and uh, what the pathway has been to get into reopening. We're going to be operating from our new site here from after Easter. Uh, Obviously things get a bit tight, everything in Christchurch gets a bit slower, uh, but we'll be bringing in around about 250 students from day one with about 40 staff, uh, and we're really excited to be getting back into the CBD. Uh, we'll be among the first operations back and going to bring lots of young people and the vibrancy that goes with educated young people. But one of the attractions of being here is the ability to grow as the new buildings go up and the uh, city redevelops. So why do we decided to be one of the first back in here. Um, 
firstly, we found a, an affordable site. Uh, um, the rents in new buildings are going to be very high, uh, but be, one, because it's an existing building, and two, because we're a bit of a risk taker. Uh, it is affordable, it's a win-win for both the landlord and ourselves. Um, the proximity uh, for us to the transport hub is really important. Uh, for students to be able to access here and also the biking and so forth in the city is going to be useful as well. Uh, and as I said before it gives the opportunity to grow and above all we believe in the CBD. Um, we want to be here, We want it's that uh, buzz that goes with it and the people around it. And I've learned from 30 years in business that it's the risk takers and the innovators uh, that get ahead. We do see it as a wee bit of risk but uh, mostly it's positive and all go. All right, well, um, this is uh, a part of Christchurch that was really a significant entertainment district. And we've just come from uh, the Triangle Centre, uh, what was the Triangle Centre, uh, which was sort of like the, uh, more or less the edge of or centre of uh, retail activity. So with us here, we have Michael Ogilvy Lee, who is the owner of that uh, centre and also the owner of the building that we just saw being uh, refurbished, and also Anthony Goff, uh, who has significant properties over on this side of the city and both of them have uh, uh, interesting things to say I think about their uh, proposals for the future so uh, a little bit more exciting announcement than uh, uh, we're pulling buildings down but uh, Michael would you like to say a few words? Yeah, first. Thank you. Um, one you've just seen uh, Avon Moore uh, which I'm proud of and by the way uh, it is an Art Deco building we have fully restored it, we are keeping it and uh, despite what they say about Jerry here, <clears throat> he's been very supportive on saving a very good looking Art Deco building. That's the truth. It is the first building to open in the red zone. We want to open it in April and Jerry's just said to me he's fully supportive of me getting full access with a cordon right around that building. I'd just like to thank him for that. It's hard in there, you saw we're drilling. It's 22 metres down to solid, it's 12 at the other end. There's huge issues with how we construct um, and I suppose my message is this, we're pretty ready to go um, and it's through the support and there has been a change here. Uh, a year ago I, w I was pretty depressed about how quickly we could get going. Now there is a groundswell, we are fixing buildings, we do want them to open soon. We do have uh, a lot of support from Christchurch and people wanting to re-enter the city but we just have to get through a few hurdles. And those hurdles are everything from engineering to access to time delays. Um, but I believe this year will be pretty positive, very positive. The other thing that's really interesting about the, the rebuild of Christchurch, it's all been done by people, locals like us. There are really no outside of Christchurch people doing it because we're looking to replace our building stock we're not developers who try and build cheap and rent really high and on flick it and don't worry about the ongoing um, maintenance and building. We're looking, so we, we do away with the margins and so we build a better quality product, let a little cheaper so that there's continuity and are worried about the ongoing life of that building. Quite a different way of looking at it and that's why you're seeing passionate people like Michael and myself driving this sort of thing and we're looking for quality, we're looking for longevity and we're looking for world class. It's, it's going to be able to be got because we're building better. We've got to build better in Christchurch, we've got to build safe yep. buildings. These will be the safest places in New Zealand to come to. That, you know, every, anything else built in Christchurch two or three years ago, it will be at a lesser code. So these will be the safest places, they'll be the best insurance. The insurance wants to insure buildings that they know are not going to fall down. And we want to have our guests and tenants and everyone in buildings that are nice and safe. So I don't see a problem there. Visit um, New Regent Street now. This is a street that was um, built in 1931. And it's considered to be, so my notes say, one of New Zealand's best examples of art and decor uh, architecture outside of Napier. So there is 38 boutique shops in this in this street. And so we've got David Manning here who's going to just talk about the project and answer any of your questions about New Regent Street. So it's a series of modular units, um, all about 65 square metres in area, two storey, 
and they're all built after the 1931 earthquake in Napier, which is why the thing has stood up so well. The construction is steel frame, uh, concrete reinforced frames with brick infill panels. Um, as you can see, we're well on with our reconstruction and refurbishment works and uh, we've, we're well on the way with our tenant letting process. Uh, basically the history of the street is it was built in 1931 as a depression project by Mr Stacey. So we had superficial damage but basically the work that's been done has been restoration work back to the heritage uh, status that it is. It's a Heritage 1 precinct and we've been lucky to get a lot of help from the Council, the Historic Places Trust and others. You'll be able to see that all of the heritage items have been replaced uh, back to their normal so it, when it's finished and the streets paved it'll be just like it was in 1931. So we're pretty excited about it.